Several tadpoles now have well-developed back legs, and one even has its front legs and will soon be needing to leave the water. So that means in today's episode, I'm going to be setting up my brand new terrarium, and because it's brand new, I'm going to be trying out a few new techniques that I've not done in previous years. I also want to talk a bit about how to feed your tadpoles at the stage where they get their legs, and also how to feed your froglets when you first put them in the terrarium. So stay tuned for that coming up in this episode. Welcome to Frog Watch. I've gone for the Exoterra Medium Low Natural Terrarium. It has a stainless steel mesh top and a unique ventilation system that's supposed to keep the front glass free of moisture. The lockable front opening double doors should mean easier access to the frogs, and a proper fitting lid means no escapes, hopefully. So I'm pretty excited about using this. This will be the first year I've had a proper dedicated terrarium rather than a repurposed fish tank. So admittedly, this was a little bit bigger than I was expecting when I ordered it. I obviously didn't measure it properly, uh, but I think it'll be absolutely fine. We've got loads of frogs, or we will have, um, so uh, we'll fill it up nicely. So uh, let's get this set up and I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. The first thing I'm doing is adding the substrate. This year I've gone for terrarium soil rather than my usual bark. The main reason I'm doing this is that I've always found when feeding the frogs crickets, the crickets quickly disappear under the bark never to be seen again, and unless the frogs are quick, hundreds of crickets never get eaten, and it seems rather inefficient. I'm hoping the crickets don't have great burrowing skills, and so we'll have less places to hide with the soil as the substrate. Next I add in clumps of sphagnum moss. This I've used before. It's the living moss that helps keep the humidity of the terrarium up and provides moist places for the frogs to hide and will prevent the frogs from drying out. I add in a couple of tank decorations like this java wood log. Java wood is made from retired coffee trees of 25 to 35 years of age after they've become non-productive. This log will provide a place for the frogs to hide. Next I add in two small water dishes. This will be the only water in the terrarium, apart from the moisture found on the moss. Something a lot of people don't realise is that frogs don't actually spend much time in ponds and live most of their life on land. Once the tadpole has its front legs it needs to leave the water completely, although it still needs access to damp areas so it won't dry out. Next I add in this fake vine for a splash of colour and a bit more moss and I think I'm done. Our attention back to the tadpoles just for a moment. Now tadpoles start off as herbivores, so they eat plant matter, and you'll have seen me use spinach mostly in previous episodes. And again, I've mentioned that you can also feed them things like uh, romaine lettuce, cucumber, fish flakes, anything like that is a good sort of uh, tadpole food. However, when they get that back legs, they do change their diet from herbivore to carnivore. So you start to need to give them a more protein-based food. Now, generally, I will use things like frozen bloodworm. This is very simple. You can get it from the pet shop. This is the kind of thing that people give to the fish as treats, uh, as a supplementary diet. These are just blocks of frozen bloodworm, and all I do is pop out a little ice cube, pop it into the tank, and that's all you need to do. And you may have seen last week's uh, short video that I did, which basically covers this whole thing in more detail. Now, one thing I have noticed after starting to feed the tadpoles the bloodworm is the water in the tank has got a little bit more cloudy. It stayed pretty clear up until then, uh, but that does mean that uh, you need to do water changes a little bit more frequently. I think it was the last episode, the full episode of Frog Watch, that I did a partial water change. So, if you're interested, you can go back and just sort of check out how I do that. Um, so these tanks are getting a little bit cloudy, so I will probably give them another water change very soon. Now, if you're not able to find bloodworm, other things that I've used in the past are brine shrimp. Uh, again, it's very similar. You can get that uh, from the pet store. It's a, a fish food. 
Um, but maybe a slightly cheaper, easier to find option is simply white fish that you can get from the supermarket, uh, from the frozen department. Uh, anything that doesn't have any sauce or additives to it, just plain white fish. You just cut off a small uh, part of the fish, boil it for a few minutes, and just pop it in the tank, and the, the tadpoles go wild for it. Um, so there's a whole lot of different kind of foods, really quite easy to get hold of. Um, but bloodworm, it's very simple, it's frozen, it's, you can keep it for a long time, and you just pop out a block and put it in the tank. It's really, really simple. Uh, so what about when the tadpoles get that front legs? Uh, what can you feed them then? So the first thing you need to remember is while they have that tail, they won't need to eat. So if after they get their front legs for a few days, they then absorb their tail back into their body. It doesn't drop off like some people might think, it does get reabsorbed back into the body. And while that's happening, they don't eat anything at all. Once the tail is completely gone, then they will need to start eating. Now the best thing to feed them, first of all, is things like aphids, little green fly you get in your garden sucking on the sap of the plants. Now there's loads out there at the moment. I know earlier in the year a lot of people had trouble finding them because spring came so late this year. Insect life was a lot later this year than it has been previous years and it's been difficult for people to find those kind of things. So if you can't find aphids or black fly, anything of that kind of size, or little tiny bugs uh, from your garden if you're lucky enough to have one, you may need to order things online such as flightless fruit flies, uh, hatchling sized banded crickets, those are the two things that I would recommend. Uh, because once the frogs get a bit bigger, banded crickets is my preferred food. And I normally go for size 2, which is the one up from the hatchlings. The hatchlings, when they are very, very tiny, very first hatched, generally called size 1 or hatchling, are the things you want to give them when they first come out, if you can't find aphids. Aphids are the easiest thing if you're able to find them. When the frogs get a little bit bigger, you can then move on to size 2 banded crickets, which are the perfect food for them. And I generally use that kind of size up until I release them. Occasionally, if the frogs get really big, I might move up to size 3, but that's very rare that that happens. Um, but once the, the, um, the tadpoles get their front legs, um, you can take them out pretty much as soon as you like. I'm going to leave this one in here just a little bit longer, just to make sure he is fully developed uh, before moving in, in there. So I'll make sure that we do that in the next episode. You'll see me put him uh, into the, the new enclosure. So uh, make sure you subscribe and come back for that. Um, but I think that's pretty much all I have to cover this week. Uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, let me know down in the comment section uh, whether you're keeping frogs. I know a lot of you are. And what kind of stages they're at and what kind of things do you feed them? Have you had any problems? Always, as always, leave uh, any questions you have down in the comment section. I'm always happy to answer them at any point. If you see this video months in the future, years in the future, you can still sit down and comment. Hopefully I'll see it and uh, I will always try and answer them. So anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.